Spinal cord stimulation has been around for the last 40 years and has evolved considerably in the last 20 to 30 years. The devices have become smaller, more versatile, and much more effective. The basic idea is that we're blocking the pain transmission from the low back, legs, arms, or neck from reaching the centers in the brain that interpret that as pain. The stimulator process takes two phases. There's a trial and a permanent. During the trial, the patient experiences what this device could do for them without any incisions, simply with a needle placement, and they do this at home. So it's a very real-life trial. If they are successful during the trial, we move to the permanent stage where we implant the device underneath the skin and there's no wire sticking out. So when we look at patients who have exhausted other forms of treatment, we really have to figure out whether or not spinal cord stimulation is the right option for them. And typically that is a patient with primarily nerve pain. Nerve pain typically tends to be sharp, stabbing, pins and needles, burning, whereas joint and bony arthritic pain can be dull, achy, and worsens when they stand up or walk around, whereas when they lay down, they feel much better. Using a local anesthetic and a small needle, we place this lead within the spinal canal. We then steer the lead to the mid-back area where all the pain receptors for the low back and legs live. The lead is a very soft, flexible wire that contains eight contacts at the end. They emit a small signal that's not painful and blocks the pain signal from making its way to the brain where you feel it. The patient is given a remote control that controls the device and depending on their pain for that day, they're able to address it more appropriately.